Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I'm the IT Geek. Welcome back everyone to my channel. Um, we are on Radio Wednesday, so I've kind of bringing it back. I had a little break from Radio Wednesday because, uh, to be honest, I was getting a bit bored of just doing those sort of demos from my documentation. I thought I'd done that to death. Um, and I am I am still doing um, a collaboration. There's going to be a collaboration coming up for Nerdio Wednesday. Um, so I don't want to give too much away about the, the format, but I think I'm going to wait till next year. So next year, the format of Nerdio Wednesday is going to change. However, I've got an, I came up with this new idea. I was thinking, you know what, still, there's so much I want to kind of talk about when it comes to Nerdio and, and EUC, AVD, Windows 365. So I'm still doing my Windows 365 series, focus around security and stuff. But I thought, you know what, what I've not shared yet are my sort of top 10 NME features. So I'm always talking about this with, with a couple people at work. So the, for the next sort of 10 weeks anyway, um, this is going to be my, it's going to be what you can expect on a Wednesday. So you'll have uh, Nerdio Wednesday as normal, but it'll be my, so this is my personal top 10 Nerdio Enterprise Manager or Nerdio Manager for Enterprise features. So every Wednesday I'll be doing a little demo of what is my, I'm talking a little bit about what is my actual favorite, you know, my, my top 10 features. So I suppose this is not in any real order. Uh, I'm not going to say, oh, this is my favorite. These are just my top 10. You know, these are the features that I feel are uh, uh, sort of a step above the rest. Right, so, so today's going to be that first one. And we're actually going to, so the, the first one I want to talk about is um, intelligent auto scaling. So this is enemies intelligent auto scaling. And this obviously saves so much time and so much money, right? Um, being able to automatically scale your session host in and out depending on what your requirements are, what your schedule is, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly show you in Enemy how we can configure that and, and the settings that you are able to configure. So let's jump into the portal. Okay, so here we are in Enemy. Uh, we wanna go down to workspaces. Uh, so I've got two workspaces. I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on this one. So I've not got any host pools in here yet. So uh, maybe one of, the, uh, one of my top 10 um one of my top 10 videos we can uh, do that so if we go to the the, the workspace here so sd hyphen ws hyphen zero one click on the three dots at the side here um and you want to you want to essentially go to the host pool so you click on that you can go to the three dots on the side right and here we have my host pool so this is my host pool not my 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 session host um and it's three dots again and now we want to go to manage well below managers auto scale this is where i want to configure auto scaling okay so Straight away, this takes us to that page. And the first thing to note is my auto scaling is not enabled. So let's just click on that. So this auto scale can be turned on or off. If turned off, session host in the host will can be controlled manually. So you can still manually turn machine, you know, VMs off. If turned on, the system will take over the session host management. Auto scaling must be temporarily turned off when updating the gold images associated with the dynamic host pool. So something to, to remember there. So anyway, we want to toggle this on, right? because we want to turn it on. So let's start off with the simple stuff, the, the time zone. Obviously, I'm, I'm in Sydney these days, so that's going to be my time zone. There's certain things that are already populated, right? So the name. So again, this is the prefix of my, my new host pools. Uh, I want SD-AVD. Um, the network, so I want it to be the same network that I've configured on my host pool. Do we want an additional, do any additional subnets? Not in this case, but you may want to do that. You can select those. Um, desktop image, so I'm just going to use the, the Gen 10 multi-session, uh, Gen 2 multi-session, sorry, for Windows 11 22H2 for AVD. Uh, do you want to use a staged image version? Again, you might want to do this, so you can enable that. VM size, so this is a template, so I want all my VMs, to, again, in a, in a host pool, all your VMs need to be the same size, right? So I've just, just selected two AS, but you might have a certain, depending on what workload you are doing this for, it might be a power workload, it might be a low workload, whatever. Make sure you select the relevant template for the VM size for that work workload specifically, right? And then um, the running OS disk size. This is, again, this is set in stone for me. I want it to be uh, E10 <coughs> standard. So do you want the stopped OS, what's the stopped OS disk type? Do you want it to be standard or, you know, again, that's, uh, everyone might have something different there. But this is basically automatically convert the OS disk of a session host VMs when they are stopped. Um, so again, if you, uh, obviously I've got standard SSD. If I go standard HDD, that's going to lower the price, right? It's lower my, lower my, my charges and my cost consumption. What resource group? And then VM naming, you can have a reuse images or you can have standard names or unique names, right? Again, I think I'll change that to unique names. Now, do we want to automatically re-image the, the used host? Now, again, this depends on 
um, how often you're updating. You know, you might have a you might have a, like a monthly patch schedule where the image is is recaptured and, and re redone. So I think in my case, I would normally recommend having a reimage every month with the updates and the patching schedule. So I'd probably leave this disabled again. Each there might be a use case for using an organization where you want to reimage the host every time this kicks in, but. I don't know, that seems a bit overkill for me. And here's really cool, it tells you estimated monthly you know, costs of my compute. Um, my, my minimum will be 54 pounds, I'm still in pounds for some reason, but my max might be 381. Okay, storage to 27, 55 maximum. Okay, so this is a bit of a graph that kind of, you know, auto-scale analytics. I've, I've, I've got insufficient data because I've not, I've not actually deployed this yet. I enabled it right in front of you. So, but again, this tells you sort of high over-provision, over-provision, optimal provisioning, under-provision, capacity variation, disconnected session, active sessions, and excess users. So I'll give you a really good graph representation. Now, we've got two options here. We can either go with the default schedule. So you can do an auto-scale profile, you know, or you can do an alternate schedule, right? So again, this depends on um what you need so I'll, I'll probably just let's just see for an alternate schedule right you can well let's look at default schedule first so you've got a scaling profile here you can do a custom one or you can um, if you've got a scaling profile you've already created you could use that so this is default schedule by the way so hostful properties you can either do session limit per host so this is basically specify the maximum number of session hosts per host right um oh, num a maximum number of sessions per host sorry Put the gap in the wrong the kind of <laughs> um, okay once this session limit is reached and there are no more available hosts a new host will be started automatically so how many sessions do we want per host right so obviously that's that's a ridiculous number i'd say depending on depending on on what again depending on what your use case is you might say five okay now what load balancing do you want to use so we've obviously got breadth first or depth first so breadth first is just round robin it'll hit anyone or breadth uh, depth first is where one it'll basically fill one session host up to up to five and then it'll trigger the other one up to four and it'll trigger the other one i'd go depth first this is a lot better for cost optimization right now do you want to start the vm on connect or you know that that's i wouldn't want to start because then it'll take time and the user experience might be poor so i wouldn't want to start that on connect personally um okay uh so what's that saying so for, the, how i interpret that is as soon as the the okay once this gets to five user limit next person to log on that will initiate the the vm connection that'll start the vm uh, i don't know that's going to give a slow exp log on experience to me i've after you know when i've had my session notes turned off my personal one i've launched it and it's turned off uh, it takes ages to boot up sometimes. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I would leave that turned off. Okay, now we're going down to host pool sizing. Okay, so active host defined as, do you want the AVD, AVD agent available or VM started? So I'd leave the AVD. So we'll activate the host once the AVD agent's available, not when the VM's just started to me. So I, I like that, I'm gonna leave that where it is. Uh, but let's just explain here. When, when set to VM running, the system will identify uh, a session host the VM is active as long as the VM is running in Azure. When set to AVD agent available, the system will identify a session host VM as active only when AVD uh, backend is receiving heartbeats to the session host. Now, uh, again, there's an argument for and against this, right? Uh, technically, what if there's an issue with the AVD agent? So technically, it will be available. But you've got to balance that risk with with you know do you want the AV you know, do you want that session host talking to AVD and getting all that telemetry straight off the bat or you know so it depends on what your requirements are maybe a VM started is probably better so you can get late users log on look at the VM agent issue afterwards along the user can work okay so base host pool capacity this is basically saying the number of session host VMs uh, to always be part of this host pool the session may host sessions may be stopped or running so again how many how many vms do you want in your host pool right and again depends on your capacity planning and how many users you think are going to be logging on and if you say you've got five per as i've said maximum five per host pool then this means i'll only have 25 people in sessions what if it's 50 people who use this this host pool do you know what i mean so again um you can you can change that and alternate that as you want minimum active host capacity you might want that to be two so there's always two that are turned on burst beyond base capacity so this is basically saying capacity to burst above the standard number of session host vms when the vm uh, where, where there's user demand so basically what we're saying is two extra session hosts when it, when it gets to 10 session hosts another up to two can be deployed um if the demand so that's a really cool feature there i think
So here's the scaling logic, right? So use multiple auto scale triggers if you want. Um, but again, I think that I think it's best to keep one to to cut to, to, to minimize confusion. So um, we've got the auto scale trigger one here. So this is the one and only trigger we're going to do for argument's sake. So the auto scale trigger type. Do you want CP usage, RAM usage, active uh, average active sessions, available sessions, user driven. So again. Depending on what you want, let's have a look see if it's, so yeah, it's going to explain. So here it says, select auto scale trigger for event based scaling. So there are five possible triggers, CPU usage, blah, 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 we've seen those. So CPU and RAM usage will scale out when the average CPU or RAM usage uh, across all session hosts in the host pool exceeds that predefined value or the predefined usage. So if we put, you know, if we put like that, whatever that value is there, 65% there. So start or create. So scale up to one host if CPU utilization across all hosts exceeds 65 uh, for, for, for more than five minutes. And that's the same for RAM, right? Just just scale up depending on if the RAM is 80%. When it comes to active sessions, um, let's just reread this and what does it say? Active sessions will scale out. Oh, sorry, yeah. So available sessions will maintain the number of active hosts, blah, blah, blah. Where's the one about? Okay, yeah. Average active sessions will scale out when the average number of active sessions exceeds a predefined value. Okay, so average active sessions. So start creating a session host when there's um, every session connection or so average um, active sessions of, uh, exceeds two. So when there's three across all the host pools, then deploy one and stop when there's uh, when it goes below one. Okay, so again. Depends what you want to do. Depends on what your scaling plan is and, and you, what you feel is relevant to as an organization. There's no right or wrong to this configuration. It just depends what you want to do. Um, so have a play about with us. See what works best for you. Okay, scale in restrictions now. Okay, stop or remove scaling hosts only from. So you've got you've got a time limit there. This is all about the time, right? So again, um, you may be you know during business hours. I don't want to scale out. Um, so I don't want to scale back in, I want to leave it as it is. So say if you're a nine to five, you might say, right, let's say 7 p.m. Um, yeah, to uh, let's say 6 a.m. or let's say 5 a.m. in case some early birds. <laughs> uh, scale aggressiveness, high, um, and then you know deactivate drain mode, host. Um, you can either do, so basically this is saying, deactivate set to drain mode, all hosts except the minimum active host numbers uh, specified above. So obviously we've got two set to above, so it's all but two. Um, or you could just do no, so they all stay in drain mode. So you want rolling drain mode to be disabled or enabled. That's basically, so create multiple drain windows and target specific percentages of your host to drain mode. I feel like this is really advanced, I'll just leave that disabled. Pre-staging host, again, if you want to pre-stage those first, you can do. And then obviously some messaging around what you want to send to users in case they are logged on at those times. Then you can just click on save and that's saved and then again you've got you've got the other version here as I said which is the alternate schedule. It's pretty much the same setting, there's no different settings, it's just an alternate schedule, right? Um, so that is the first uh, enemy feature in my top 10. It's not got a list yet, uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll create a list at the end, but that's one of my top 10 features in enemy. Um, so as I said, I think that's really cool, I think it's really powerful. Natively in AVD, I think it's a pain to do. I think it's a ball ache to do, if I'm honest. So yeah, I love the the auto scaling, intelligent auto scaling in, in NME. So thank you for joining me in this video. I've got loads of. I'll put the link to the the documentation for intelligent uh, auto scaling for NME in the description. Also a link to my uh, my my LinkedIn profile, uh, and also a, a link to my exam content. So I do a lot of Microsoft exam content. I've got three levels. So you've got to be a, a member. So I've got three levels, member one, two, and three. Um, and level one has all the um, fundamentals that MS 900, AZ 900, SE 900 is on the way. And then level two includes that and the associate stuff. So AZ 140, AZ 700, SE 300, stuff like that. I've got others as well. Level three includes all those plus the, the advanced sort of expert level. I've got SE 100 in there at the moment. Uh, so thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.